Coming up, the latest fashion craze, lacy bras and panties for men. What happens when an all-American male tries them on next? Well, believe it or not, this is the hottest trend in England, and it's getting ready to hit the shores of the U.S. It's lingerie, it's sexy, and it's for men. There's panties and bras and camisoles and even garter belts. The question is, are American men too macho for this softness? Well, we did our own test with a very hunky macho man, and we're going to find out if he's going to be switching to garter belts to hold up his hose. Plus, we have taken men from our very own studio audience, and they're going to model some of this sexy lingerie. Is the American man ready for bras and panties? Stay with us. <laughs> who started it all. Uh, she'd been designing lingerie for over seven years when she decided to create a line of what she called sensual lingerie for men. Uh, why? <laughs> I mean, why do men need this kind of lace and bows and frills and sexy stuff? Well, it's as you mentioned, I've been designing lingerie for men and for women for about seven years. And it really just came about because we've had so many men calling up over the years saying, listen, I want something a bit more feminine. I like to feel the, uh, the silk next to my skin, but I want a lot of lace next to it as well. And the wives have been calling up. So it was just, it just came out of so many requests and suggestions from our customers. I, mean, I, would I, think, I, I would think that the men who called would be uh, a, a cross-dresser or, or somebody who uh, try, wears women's clothes or something like that. Well, no? that's, that was my first impression as well, but then after talking to these men... I mean, men, a gay, this would be a line of gay lingerie, I would think. No? Well, you, no, no, it's not. That's a funny thing. I mean, that would be my first impression as well when I was getting all these requests from people. But um, these men and their wives were calling up, and they're saying, no, they're in happy heterosexual relationships. They have children. Their wives know about it. And they're not cross-dressers. I mean, I get the impression from my limited knowledge of cross-dressing that cross-dressers are men who like to wear skirts and wigs and, you know, the whole, everything, the, the, the breasts. But these are just men who wear business suits and they like to wear our stuff underneath their business suits. Like a teddy. Exactly, yeah. And what's I mean, the, what's, <laughs> but I shouldn't surmise that. What's the best seller in the line? Ooh, I would say the best seller is the stuff that's more conventional, the French knickers um, with the inner brief and matching camisoles. Um, followed by followed by basques with suspenders, what we call them suspenders in England, they're garters and stockings. And I tell you, we get a lot of men, policemen, firemen, who wear the stockings because it keeps their legs warm. That's what they tell me. I mean, we get lots of comments from these men. <laughs> oh, I mean, I, I, oh God, what is? I personally, I don't wear stockings myself. But now, these, now these, this <laughs> is done in England, right? That's right. We can always blame everything on England. That's right. You um, can thank us for this one. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> well, England seems to me to have more eccentrics generally than America does. Mm -hmm. What has been the response in England? Fantastic, fantastic. We started this off as a test about six months ago. And uh, once again, I say it was in response to these suggestions. And the response was incredible. I mean, just in the first week, once we advertised our catalog, because we are mail order, we had about 8,000 requests from men and from their wives asking for these things, asking for our catalog. That is a lot. That's right. I mean, in, in six months' time, our mailing list is about 100,000 people now, which is incredible. Boggles my mind. It does, yeah, mine Meet too. Nathan. Nathan is one of Christina's customers, and he says, why shouldn't men feel soft and sensual? Uh, what items have you bought, Nathan? Well, um, myself, I, I originally got the catalog um, through the National Examiner. And when I found the catalog, here's just the two that I basically got. <laughs> um, these are the French knickers, basically. Knickers I guess, meaning, uh, to us, underpants. Basically. It, right. it, we call them underpants. Well, to the men, okay, to the men, basically, this would be equivalent of um, silk boxers. Okay, and with, but like, they have an awful lot of lace on the bottom of them, Nathan. You know? Well, I just... Okay, <laughs> let's see the other one. And the other one, um, this one's made of satin, and uh, this is more or less like something... I have pants just like that, Nathan. <laughs> Except there's a little more pouch, I guess, than, than yours. Uh, how do you feel about this, though? 
Well, the thing is, um, I've, I've had steady girlfriends all my life. There's, there's no question of, about um, how I feel about my sexuality or anything like that. It's not even, it's not even a, an issue, basically. Um, when I got the catalog, I'm, I'm a fairly outgoing individual, and I got the catalog, and, and these things look very comfortable. They're for men. I mean, again, they're not for women. And so I'm not being, buying women's clothing. I'm buying um, undergarments. But it feels men. good, right? Well, I'd, I'd much rather wear silk against my skin than, than cotton. I mean, you look okay. toward the women in your audience, and, and teddies, for example, aren't made from wool. They're made from silk, basically. I'm, I'm looking at kind of shocked look on the audience. It's, uh, <laughs> I want you to meet Anne, and we thought we'd follow up what you said. Anne is a friend of Nathan's, and uh, a friend like a date friend? No, a best friend. A best friend. You never dated him? Very briefly. <laughs> in, in early high school, we dated. Okay. Briefly is like part of the pun, because we're going to be talking about briefs. <laughs> uh, you know that Nathan wears this lingerie. Does that make him less masculine to you? No. It, it doesn't change my opinion of him at all. Um, I think if it feels comfortable, if it's something that he enjoys wearing, um, I think that's wonderful. Why not, right? Garter belt, you'd say the same thing? A little would, teddy, corset? I would be surprised. Yes. <laughs> well, that's my thought. A lot of women would be very surprised. I would be very shocked, I think, if, um, say, my boyfriend had dressed and I saw him with sexier underclothes on than myself. I'd be a little shocked. I would think that that's a normal thing. Uh, the catalog is, is, is very, very shocking. How are your sales in the United States? Well, we're just starting up here in about two weeks' time. Um, and I expect they'll be quite good. I mean, if the UK is anything to go by, the US is a massive market. There must, uh, the main thing is we're trying to sort of present this to people and say, hey, there's nothing wrong with this. There's nothing kinky about it. You know, you can wear, you can have a choice. You can wear boring old boxer shorts or you can wear our stuff, which is very feminine. So I expect it will go quite well. I think it's kinky as anything. <laughs> Nathan, do you uh, go to the gym or anything? <laughs> right, good uh, question. Um, well, yeah, basically every day. I mean, it's not, it's not an issue. I'm not, I'm not wearing a dress. I'm basically wearing something. No, but I mean, I was just me. wondering if you got any particular response from your fellow. Well, it's, it's, there again, this is an undergarment. I don't wear just these in public and lift weights. I mean, um, as far as changing and stuff, you know. Oh, well, it's, I mean, I wear. Hey, what are those? Or, you know. I don't have just these. This is what I got from the catalog. Oh, basically, okay. I don't have just two pairs of underwear in my whole <laughs> wardrobe. But I mean, you haven't gotten got any other, other like things I wear, that I mean, he can I wear, do. Well, yes, ma'am. Like Calvin Klein's or, or other things like that. You said you sell brassieres to men, too? That's right. What do they put in it? Oh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they put their pecs in it. Um, we, the, the bras came around as a request because a lot of men were saying, I used to be a weightlifter, and I'm getting a bit floppy and flabby, you know, just as women do. Hate to admit it. And, and they wanted something with a bit of support, but something that, that looked good as well. So we don't, it doesn't have cups per se, it's just, it's very flat. I, I always thought that bras were one of the most uncomfortable things in the world. <laughs> that, that men, <laughs> that men would want one boggles my mind. I think it's totally ridicu ridiculous, and I don't know what you're thinking about, or who would wear that. <laughs> Or what possesses you to wear that? Because I don't know what girl in her right mind would want her boyfriend running around her bedroom in that. Okay. We asked, uh, in answer to your question, we asked a few of the men in our studio audience to model some of Christina's designs. Now, you weren't in that line, thank heavens, I guess. <laughs> Dwayne and Michael, come on out. Christina, what are we seeing here? These are not models, these are our guys. <laughs> How does this feel? When they make them, it feels kind of comfortable, but you know, I need more room down below. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Later, this macho man to help us find out if the American male is ready for the frills and the lace. And next, a man who says, any man who wears this lingerie, is his quote is a little bit fruity. This should be interesting. Stay with us. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, mm, we're talking about one of the hottest trends, supposedly, in the United Kingdom, getting ready to hit the streets of America in a couple of weeks. Sexy lingerie for men. Please meet Mike. Mike is a fireman, and if you follow our show with any regularity, you know fireman is my favorite profession. <laughs> uh, he considers himself a typical male. Mike, you have problem with the men wearing the lace and the buttons and the bows and the lingerie? Well, Sally, I don't know. I spent uh, half my life uh, trying to get women out of this stuff. Now they want me to wear it. I, I, have, <laughs> I particularly don't. I uh, I'm not into that. What was your first impression when you saw it? Well, uh, I feel that um, maybe uh, the homosexual community, the transvestites, the transsexuals, or uh, cross-dressers, perhaps this is great for them, but, uh, you know, she had mentioned before that I know a lot of policemen and firemen who uh, wear this stuff to keep them warm. I used to be a policeman, and now I'm a fireman, and I don't know anyone who ever wore any of that. <laughs> so, and I'm talking, you know, 40,000 strong combined. Are you married? No, I'm not. Are you engaged? Yes, I am. What would she say if you got undressed and under she'd the... She'd ask her, she's right over there. Where are you? Okay. What would you say, why well, ask him, what would you say? I, I'd be pretty nervous. <laughs> I don't know. I, I would understand that nervousness is, is would be what it's but, about. But don't you think it would I be would nice? Think. Oh, excuse me. Don't you think it'd be nice to see your husband or your boyfriend in something different than just plain old boring wife friends no. or boxers? Not really. I, I like to see him in silk boxers, but mm -hmm. with lace. I don't think it's um, masculine. Well, yeah. the, the two items, the two items that I did get from the catalog, which which I show you, was was the the lace. Um, on the inside for mm -hmm. more comfort, and it's basically silk boxers to everyone on the outside. No, they look pretty unusual to me. I, I would agree. Well, the, the other one, which which any woman might be interested in for their boyfriend or, or even their husband. Maybe a joke. Maybe. Yeah. Well, it's I would wear it, I would wear it to a costume party or to a Halloween party. Yeah. But I don't have breasts. Why should I wear a bra? I don't understand. <laughs> right. Right. No reason to have a bra. Right. All right. Where's Keith? Keith, you agree with Mike? No, completely disagree. And um, I mean, we, we deal with a society in which these definitions have been set for us. You know, that right now there's about, um, like, teenage boys who are dealing with two to four times as high a suicide rate because of the fashion and social definitions that have been placed on us. And we can't enjoy comfort, we can't enjoy fashion. You know, it's like what the typical male is in boring clothes. We're not going to make this a social issue. We're just talking it about lingerie. A, it's a fashion, yeah. social. It's our you know, life. You want, you're going to start. This, this can We're bring out a pleasure a, this can, here. This can you know, tangent out to a million we, things. That we should be able to enjoy um, what, it, what, what happened to when men were men and women were women. What happened to that? Um, it, if, if you'll go back in history, there are many times where um, people wearing. Um, kind of bending gender have been viewed as the healers, as the um, people that people go to for prophecies. I mean, you know, there was a time before men were men and women were women. Well, that's the past. Now let's, I don't want my and, son yeah, so wearing lingerie. Let's go lingerie. into the future okay. and try to break these things that have been set before us. But I think well, that, let I me, think let me get it, call in a consultant right now. Please meet Scott. You just become our consultant. <laughs> Thank you. Scott is a journalist, and uh, he has been writing uh, about men's fashions for over three years, a serious journalist. What newspaper? I think we should give him a plug. Uh, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Okay. Scott, who's right? Is he right? Is our fireman right? Uh, what do you think? I think there's a, there's a middle ground. I think lately men have become much more aware of, of comfort fabrics like silk, um, like stretch fabrics, the things that women have been able to take advantage of for a long time. But in order for garments made out of those fabrics to sell, they have to be cut in a traditional or masculine type way. That's why, you know, silk boxers are tremendous sellers. That's why uh, the Calvin Klein brand of stretch underwear, is, you know, tremendous sellers. But they're still cut in an athletic way or in a masculine way. So women buy them for their men, and men don't hesitate to buy them for themselves. But are the English, I'm dying to know, because I, I, I have this funny view of the English, are they very different than us in men, no. in fashion? It definitely. They're, definitely. They're, they're much different, and they're, they're pretty much. They're more courageous, I think. They well, they're they they're much more courageous, but they're not considered in the fashion mainstream. Uh, if you watch something like the style shows on cable uh, television, you notice that they go to Paris, they go to Milan, they go to New York, but pretty much London is ignored. Why? 
It's because they are not doing marketable things. That is, it's not like they don't know fabric, it's not like they don't know tailoring, but they're not doing things that are marketable. But they okay. do sell. I mean, for our, our range is selling incredibly, and that's what we go by. I mean, if this Why is her selling, range selling, doing? Scott? You're a journalist. Why is it selling? Well, I, by the I, way, I, here's an article for you. I hope you write about it. Oh, I, I, definitely, I definitely <laughs> want to talk to her after the show. But I, I can't say why it is selling, because like, like the gentleman here, I would assume that someone would have uh, some type of sexual gratification that they might be getting out of wearing a garment like right. this. Right. I don't think so. Yes, I have a well, question. I have a question for Nathan. Yeah. You say uh, that you like, you know, wear silk uh, boxers and everything, but they sell boxers in the store for men that are silk. You know, they don't look like women's underwear. Why would you buy that? Because I know... Well, it's, it's basically, I would consider myself more of an outgoing and more liberal, whereas you would go to... So the little bit of lace It, it doesn't makes bother it... me. I'm not, I'm not walking down the street, like I said before, in these boxers, whatever I wear underneath. I'm not wearing like anything totally flamboyant. <laughs> and yeah. I play football, and I also work for EMS. And I cannot pitch myself going into the gym with these lace shorts on. I mean, come on, you know, there's a limit to what you got to wear. And this I man can't is a five believe me. I'm and there's no time. professional football, basketball star going to wear any of this stuff that you're wearing. I well, think were you we online this time. morning when we were looking for models to try it on? No, I wasn't. And if I was, I would have not went. Okay. Well, yes, ma'am? Um, I just want to say that as, as a woman, um, most of my girlfriends that I know aren't even comfortable wearing lingerie. It's uncomfortable. It creeps up, right. it, oh. it pulls, it tugs, it lace yeah. itches. Yeah. And you can't be wearing this for comfort. You must be, I agree with, with um, the journalist, Scott, that you must be wearing this for some other reason, some sort well, of sexual gratification, you know, is, because um, as, it's totally uncomfortable. As a woman, I know about lingerie, and which is why I designed the stuff so it really fits men. And we use just the, the best fabric, so it's very soft next to the skin. But I mean, it goes back to this thing. Women have been wearing men's fashions for hundreds of years. Why can't men sort of cross the gap there? I mean, what's wrong with Scott, men that's a good question like to ask you. If we have, OK, you stand up. I'm doing this to you. It's unfair. <laughs> uh, if everything that she's got on that I could see could be worn by a man, right. her sneakers, her jeans, her shirt, which is probably polo, right? Or that, OK, why? can't some a man sit there wearing her clothes or wearing a woman's clothes well it, it just gets down to undergarments you know that little bit of lace makes the difference between saying you know i may wear biker shorts when i go to the gym something like that but it's just that little bit of lace that that identifies it as a feminine product but, and it's so stuck in our mindsets right now that lace means one thing pink means one thing you know color so it's never going to change the, the no, it's going to i mean it may ultimately change it's, a it's lot of things changing. with fashion look at it now it's changing i mean she's okay. trying to change it i i i mean you know something to each their own but a man should be a man and wear man's clothes, and a woman well, should be a woman and wear women's clothes. Well, what do you see about her? Right. No, no, no. She, but she's not wearing jock shorts or jo a jock strap on under there. I, to, to me, to me, Calvin Klein knit underwear is fine. Knit boxes are fine. I'm not going to be in lace. And Nathan, who are you kidding? You read the National Examiner? You, you open well, that up and you find catalogs and you're going to mail. You don't look like the type of person that'll open up the National Examiner and say, well, it, Ooh, it look depends at this what I take seriously, and it depends what I feel like doing. All right. well, let me just respond to that quick, Sally. It's like if you look at, at women, if you open up a very respectable female magazine, let's say Elle or Cosmo, you see Elle McPherson in a suit and tie. Is she yeah. a lesbian? It's not even an issue. This isn't women's clothing. This isn't cross-dressing. I'm trying cross to get Scott to tell me why we think it's an issue, because well, I'm not, agreeing it's not with you cross -dressing. basically. It's not well, the point. It's men's clothing made for men, and I'm a man, and I find if silk. If I walked in, in my house clothing. and saw my husband wearing a bra and oh garter God. and stockings, I'd send him to a psychiatrist. <laughs> Nathan, you work out at a gym. Now, you're working out with bodybuilders. Can you see these bodybuilders coming in in the locker room and taking off their bra, not, taking off their garter belt, and that's saying, That's not an issue. All right, now, of course it's an issue. It's they're, definitely they're, an issue. They're, it's, it's not a gay issue. It's not a straight issue. It's, it's not a cross-gender issue. Men should wear male underwear. What's next? You know, you're comfortable, What's that's fine. Next? If you're comfortable. But there has to be more EMS to it. I, I mean, there, there's something wrong in my point of view when someone wear a man wears a brassiere and says that they have no sexual gratification out of it. Well, there again, to each his own, like you stated yeah. before. Uh, all right. Now, we did, uh, you didn't get in the right line, either you. <laughs> so, some uh, more of our male audience members are going to model Christina's designs. This is Ron and Mark. Ron, Mark, come on out. <laughs>
They look so comfortable. <laughs> what, uh, Christine, what are we seeing here? I'm not what sure. is this? <laughs> Uh, these these we call bloomers. They're embroidered silk bloomers, bloomers. with a with a fly, and um, and a chiffon wrap. This one here, let me see. Oh, these are these are French knickers again, with just a little bit of lace. French knickers with a little bit with of a, lace. With a little bit of French lace. Uh, how does it feel? Well, it doesn't feel bad. <laughs> I'll be darned. I'll be darned. I'll be darned. We're gonna start people. Guys, gonna start liking this. We're in a lot of trouble. Well, okay. yeah. No, no, no. We're in a lot of I, trouble. Tell me, why is it that you have to walk out like a woman would walk out, shaking mm. your rear end yeah. and doing yeah. feminine moves? Yeah. Why can't you walk out like a man? <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> A woman who, yeah, he told the truth. Still ahead, a woman who says this lingerie probably embarrasses men. But next, we uh, did our own test and asked this macho man to wear some lingerie. All right, there he is. We found him. We're going to ask if he's going to switch to these lace panties. Next. Victims of stalkers. It's going on again. He's trying to kill me. And a man who stalks. This man wrote to me, and he signed his letters, AKA the stalker. Next Sally. I don't know how you're going to show that in the uh, newspaper, but you know. No. <laughs> well, Sally, one thing I wanted to mention when you had the gentleman come out here, uh, you look at the garment, it may feel very nice, and I'm sure it did, but you notice it had like the little eyelets down at the bottom. It has the lace trim. Yeah. Those are things that men haven't ever been taught to appreciate. Mm. So that's why. Will you know, they? No, no, Will no. They see, ever. That's wrong. I appreciate it, but not on me, on a woman. Right. I appreciate Will it very they? much. <laughs> Ever, will we change to the point where this will happen? It would never be one day no, one day yes. It would have to be done so gradually. They might have to do like, if they could somehow do like denim lace or something like that. Everything is done very, very gradually. You had the young lady stand up there. Uh, 20 years ago, she would have been totally improperly dressed. That's and people correct. would have frowned on her and said, where's your skirt? That's um, right. Something like this that is even much more drastic could take you know, it goes slowly. Yeah, I want. I want to get. We've been talking about the newest thing to hit the states in men's fashion, which is sexy lingerie. This is Paul. Now, Paul, you've been with us before. I have. Right. Uh, he is uh, one of our favorite people because Paul is not quiet. Paul uh, also is very daring. He volunteered to try out Christina's lingerie. Now we filmed it. Scott, watch with me. I want you to see what happened. Here's your average guy, and he's trying it on. Here we go. this. No girl, let me tell you. Everything's got a pretty bow. Does it button around here? I'm having, I'm having difficulty, but what would Arnold and Sly say about this? Huh? Where's this thing? <laughs> I don't know, it doesn't fit me. Oh yeah, I've never felt more whole in my whole life. I gotta be honest, this makes me want to exercise, man. Dum -da -da -dum. Macho man! Hi, how are ya? My name is Paul, and I wear feminine underwear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lordy lord! Okay, I'm having too much fun with this. I'm starting to enjoy it, right? I'll let you make up your mind. Ahem. <clears throat> now, Notice the men that came out wearing the little bit of lace. By the way, we did not tell them to move that way. That I asked our producer. We did not. Uh, I thought we didn't, but I wasn't going to argue. They were moving like a woman. He's standing there in front of the mirror. Did you see all the male posturing? How did it feel? Uh, to be really honest, and in a nutshell, because I won't have a big mouth this time, Sally, um, but I'm going to have a big mouth because this is see, how I that feel. that took a minute and, and a half. Okay. <laughs> Good. Before I begin, because don't misunderstand, I mean no disrespect to you or anybody else. Okay, not to you, not to anybody else. <laughs> okay, when I was approached, okay, by the folks at the Sally Show, Paul tried on be the average American male tested out. Right. Believe me, I was horrified to begin with, okay? But, but I was like, you know what? I'm not going to go on the show and denounce it and then be accused of, well, you never tried it. All right, well, it wasn't going to physically harm me. I'll have some fun with it. I'll try it on. 
God's honest truth, this, this is just how it is. Um, first of all, there's stuff in there that was so risque. I saw the brochure, horrifying. Okay, when, when I was approached by the Sally Show, they said to me, Paul, this is male uh, lingerie. There is nothing male about it, other than to put an F-E in front of that word, okay? There is nothing male about it. And I didn't even try it on, and I, and I was risque there in that film. Garter belts and bras, that, uh, even for me, is a joke. And I'll do most things for attention, Sally. I you know what it. was funny? Um, we women forget how complicated it is to hook oh, there was snap to hook be a the snaps to put under this stuff here. On, first of all. And this. No wonder I can never get it off. You know, seriously, Watching I'm just like, you do oh, this. Oh, can you get it off? <laughs> Watching you do it. this. But, but I mean, I'll get, just, I'll get right oh, to the scissor. point. <laughs> I mean, but I'll get right to the point. Uh, I, I wasn't for, for it in the beginning. I tried it, and, I, and, and it's more horrifying than I thought it would be. Okay? There's your uh, answer, it, it, Scott. It's not masculine, and it's not like, I'm afraid what people take me. Obviously, I don't give a hoot what people think of me. Yeah, obviously. Okay? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, no way. If this is going to be, if this, was, if this was a stock, I wouldn't put a dime into it because this is going to sink faster than the Titanic. If this is going to be sold, it's not going to be sold in Macy's or Dillard's mainstream. This needs to be sold like maybe cocaine or something, 4 o'clock in the morning in the village. <laughs> slipping. Okay? There's no way is this going. No way. Uh, Sarah, I just got to say, if I came home to my fiance wearing this stuff, she'd grab me by the ear, throw me down a flight of stairs, out of the house. And that's it. Yeah, but there's a problem with that. She can hang on to you by the snaps. No, I, there's no way. You know, that, that guy came out. That guy came out before. He looked like Peter Pan. Yeah, I, mean, hey, I, I felt like Peter Pan. I don't want to offend anybody. You know, but yeah, no, Peter Pan. Yes, ma'am. All right. I have to tell you something. Uh -oh. Aside from the silk or satin robes, which I think are wonderful and very mm -hmm. sexy, it felt nice. I'm very offended. I find it very offensive, and you know what? It's very commercialized. I think that we're all entitled to make money in this world. But this is going a little too far. Mm -hmm. You're expecting men yeah. to wear something, uh, personally, I find very... Repulsive is the word you're looking for. I but, guess. But uh, I, I, I knew I, you'd I, help her out. If <laughs> gay men it, want it to is. wear this, that's their business. Go she's right gonna, ahead. She's yeah, going to make a lot of money. Please. In the she's going to make tons section. of money. Right. No, 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 no. Like no, no that's game. cool. It's that's cool. But don't put it mainstream. Don't put it in my face. And I don't want any. I don't even get junk mail with that I, stuff on it. Christine. Yeah. Um, I think it's quite interesting. I mean, everybody's saying this is horrible. I would never even consider wearing it, that sort of thing, which, I mean, everybody's entitled to their opinion. It is a commercial venture. I would not do it if I was not making money in it. I'm not out there, you know, um, com campaigning for men's right to wear frilly underwear, right? But men are buying it in England, and I expect it'll do well in the States. But the thing is, I think it's really interesting that people are all defining their sexuality by what they wear. I believe they're probably gay men, and they're not telling you. I'm yeah, serious. that's another thing. I think, I I think agree there's with something. That. I think people aren't being totally honest about it. Sally, I agree with that, and I'll tell you why, because I've heard so many things. Yeah. Thousands of men are, are telling me, and thousands, that's BS. There, there, there's, there's no, and I'm, I don't want to be on, on a macho thing here, but there's no red-blooded average American male like me who, who thinks there's anything positive about it. And even, for, uh, uh, let, me put it, let me put it a step further, because I'm a doorman at a bar. I know a gazillion chicks, okay? There's no real women who want to see their men in that. And, Okay? Yeah. Keep a yeah. decent body with nice cotton boxer yes, shorts. Scott. Good to just, go. Just one thing. When I watched the videotape of him modeling the clothes, no red-blooded American man is going to be able to take care of that stuff anyway. I saw the, the spaghetti strap, and I was just yeah. waiting for him to bust out of it any, <laughs> any day now. I was you, know, <laughs> you know, I watch when my, when my wife takes care of her things, and I would never bother to do that. If I can't we, just we throw it in the We had the same thing with my husband. Before we uh, <clears throat> snookered him into doing this, <laughs> right. uh, I, I took the catalog in, and I said, you know, Carl, and he ran. He mm -hmm. was down 57th Street and gone. Because right away, right away, he was afraid I'd do that. Men associate that with, you know, homosexuality and stuff like that. And, and you know, if we're not about that, that's, I don't that think believe Carl me, that's that what, that's what it, when I first saw him in the thing, I asked him if he was gay. He got yeah, mad at me. We go in the green room, I asked like, him oh, if he like, was look gay. at me like, oh, yeah, you what, right? In America. Oh, you're gay, right? In America, young boys are taught. I don't need that in my life. And you and. In the U.S., basically, young boys and young men are taught to play with guns, basically, right? And right. women with, the, yeah, cool. with the things. Well, the thing is, it just seems like such a, such a trendy thing to be known as the type of full-blooded American male that, that hunts and kills his, you know, his, his meat and oh, eats it I raw, that kind of thing. Oh, I agree that an awful lot of those... But it just seems that, we don't want anything to do with meat. But it's, meat. Not, it's not a gender issue. 
It's not a gender issue because this is. is made for men. But it men. is. No. It's a but thing, Scott, but you're wearing girls' clothes. It's, it's a gender Scott issue. Scott is not telling us. Clothes. So all right, we're all talking at once. It's, it's female clothes that I think are made bigger for it's men. that the greatest benefit for men wearing the garter belt is to see how uncomfortable women are, and they would never ask us to put them on Okay, from now on, we'll take your never. word for it. That's right. That's absolutely right. This nice lady's had her hand up. Um, yeah, what Nathan had, I could see, you know, silk boxers and maybe satin briefs, but if my husband came in in a teddy and a camisole, like uh, Steve, had to be a contortionist, I want my man Steve. naked, not in that stuff, if it comes to the bed. No woman gets turned on by that, otherwise they got a problem, that's another show. I want to ask Christina or something. <laughs> Christina? Yes. Can women wear it? Women, can they wear it? If they're, shaped like, a, if they're shaped like a man, they could, but I mean, it's actually made for men. We've got it lots is of not. space it's women's stuff bits. made big. Um, yes, I like think that the stockings it's, it's, and the garter belts are a little too radical, but the things that the models came out with, and I like, I like that. All right, now you see, we are not saying right, that everybody dislikes this or everybody disagrees. Uh, I think that they're shaped wrong for women. I mean, isn't there more they're completely material in the things made bigger for men. It's like, well, it's when, like they were put in a microwave and they exploded. That's I mean, all. There's nothing manly about them. When Christina brought up the issue of, of men wearing bras and brassiers, I, mean, I don't, I don't right. personally go for that, but that's my own opinion. Like, you gentlemen don't think of anything as being anything of your style. It's your own opinion. No, but, the wear, point being, a but the point being, when she had brought up Braziers and such, I saw a few of the young ladies saying, yes, men, older men, may need support. That's their issue that they have to deal with. And no. this is a way... As big as a man's that. boobs can get, they don't need that kind of support. Let me ask you, where... A serious question now. Where is men's fashion going? Now, men's tools. fashion is going to comfort. It's going to being interesting. It is getting away from being regimental. You don't necessarily have to wear the blue, the gray, the black. It is going to individual style. You express yourself. You see the gentleman here, they have all got our really colorful ties. That, that was the, really the first step in menswear when every man could say, I don't have to wear that striped shirt, that striped tie anymore. Now you don't necessarily have to wear a tie at all because you have collar treatments and shirts and vests. I things love like what that. you're wearing. Would you stand up? Stand up. Just stand up for me. Stand up. But sure you like what he's wearing. But next, a woman who says men who wear lacy lingerie are an embarrassment to men. We'll be right back. All right. Okay, I'm having a little trouble tightening this around myself. Oh, there it goes. Oh, yeah. I think Arnold wore this in Terminator 1, right? I gotta be honest with you. Despite the femininity part of this, I still look good. Good, good. whether we'll have time to show the entire line. We've been talking about men's lingerie and whether the typical American male would buy into this. You said it takes a long time for things to happen. How long? How long would it take? Oh, Scott is our fashion journalist. Actually, I think this would actually take, uh, I mean, close to a century. Oh, it's gonna... Close to, all right, close to 100 years. What do you think? I think it's... Are you staring at somebody over yeah, she there? she likes me. Hold on. <laughs> no, I saw somebody that I knew. Hello. Okay. Anyway, uh, I think that... Um, if you allow this to happen, it's like you might as well allow men to grow breasts to fill yeah, those bras. The point being, we're not forcing men to do anything. Okay. And, you know, and it's all to each his own. It's, it's but just a threat to the, the thing is, heterosexual community. This gentleman on my right comes up, and he was, you know, he was flexing his muscles and such, and that's his own opinion. That's his own. Maybe he's not to offend you, but some gentlemen, you know, act more like muscle-bound just to, yeah. you know, other I'm inconsistencies leaving. they have in their personality. <laughs> Sally. American well, men, Scott? just talking about American men, you know, European men are definitely different, and European men are generally better dressed In what than American way? men. Okay, now because wait, you said two color. interesting things. Let's hear you elaborate on them. Number one, European men are more interesting. They're more interesting dressers. They know how to play with fabric, you know, uh, they, they mix Why? colors better. Because it, it's part of, you know, Europe is, a, Europe is a more artful. But is it more interesting to... to 
to wear this and try it and make it acceptable. Does that make no, it no, more no, interesting? No, 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 no. But but what you're I was talking about clothes in general. Or you're talking about the, the lingerie. I'm, I'm speaking general. of clothes in general. Uh, but what I'm getting to say is, American men don't wear anything unless they all approve of it. You know, exactly. one guy wore that first exactly. wacky tie, and then you know he might have got a little. Uh, teased or something at the office, but eventually other people started following that same mode. You know, first, other men have to approve, and then secondly, women have to stroke them and show their approval. Yeah, or else we want to get stroked in that stuff. Why are your European men better dressed? You said, you said European men are generally better dressed than American men. Definitely. I think that's true. Why? Definitely. Because, like I said, they appreciate color. They, they're not afraid to uh, mix different colors, things that normally wouldn't necessarily go together, they would attempt. And since you do it and you look comfortable in it, it seems acceptable. Okay. I always thought European men were better dressed. Yeah, I but we are afraid to wear garters, so. Um, and I, I mean, oh, like, Lord. with the whole tie issue, it's still a colored noose around your neck, oh, but, like, um, when you're oh, talking Lord. about the speed of change, like, take the pierced ear for um, a decade ago, a man has a pierced ear, boom, he's automatically a queer. Um, now you now you have scrotum piercings, nipple piercings, right. and that doesn't well, define that's a your decade. gender and at look, all and who you're sleeping that's with. That's a decade, and just so you understand, guys, you, had, you had so much uh, exposure of men wearing these earrings on MTV. Exposure, no, if you under, I just want to let you know how this happens. You have MTV, you have regular television, you have all this exposure of it, you have the athletes, and all of a sudden they say, well, he's an athlete, he can do it. So I, In other words, when they right. see it, on mainstream television, that moves it faster that is the than biggest, 100 years. Put it better, not go to mainstream. I have a question for Nathan. Um, do your guy friends know about this? Of course they do. What do you think's it's, looking at it? The thing is, it's kind of, it's irrelevant. Because I know if my friend, if it I is. saw him in that and I knew he wore that, I would definitely think you know, had an identity The question being, and, my question you being, we definitely have to have a talk. My question to you being, Solomon, what? If your friend saw you in silk boxers, would he go, whoa, queer? It's not no, an not issue. So, no, but these you're aren't silk boxers. These are things that go up with lace. Exactly, yeah. but that's your own opinion, and that's, that's your that's, choice to buy wrong. that product. <laughs> that's, that's okay. Not a friend, then. Yes, ma'am. I want to know how much this costs, because I hope you're making a lot of money on this, because <laughs> to be I don't daring, understand you gotta be in the box. what's going on, it's and that very has reasonable. to be the only reason. It's very reasonable. I mean, what we're doing is offering men an option here. I mean, if you went in to a store and you didn't have any preconceptions about what men should wear, you could have either the boxer shorts on one end of the line, or you could have our frilly knickers on could the other it, end. Does it cost the same as women's uh, uh, it lingerie? Does. It, it does. does. As uh, well-made women's lingerie. Yes, ma'am. talking about? Hi. Um, Wearing lingerie is okay, but the lace is different. My husband, I had talked to my husband about wearing certain things. I tried to get him wearing certain things. Wearing lace, he said, fine, he'll wear it. As long as it's underneath his clothes. I don't see nothing wrong with it, yeah. okay? Men will be men, and it sure is nothing wrong with my see, husband at all, uh, we, see, okay? Now, okay? Let me, let, let me respond to that. Do you like it? I don't think it there's don't anything. Me. Hold, I okay, like wait, wait. It. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, like, hey, let's stone the guy who's wearing it. Not at all. But to each exactly his own. But, but no, 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 that's exactly what I'm not no, doing. I'm telling you, I don't want it. I tell you, I, 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 I don't like know. It. I don't know. Oh, red blooded no. American. I am, because I am a but regular red blooded American. Oh, but I am, my friend. Out there, okay? My the husband is, is. No, but I believe your husband is. An, and uh, you know, when you're talking about a cabillion people, there's always going to be a small percentage of a large mass who would dig in it. Okay? But you know, there's always going to be an exception. Here's a lady the who we didn't put here. Okay? She just but the, put this up is her not going to be mainstream, said, and it's not going to be in Macy's or Dillard's, and it, it needs to be sold like Coke. Okay. Listen, we're going to see. One second. We're, we're, not, we're not here trying to. Trying we're not bashing him. Bashing, I don't care if he uh, wears it. Nathan, I ain't wearing yeah, it. Not, most of whatever he wears is his business. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm not calling him gay or anything. That's his business. I'm just saying that, and, and Paul is saying that the average man who. Now, who says who's the average man? We don't know. I think I am. I'm an average guy. Scott better know, because that. that's his okay. business. Let me take a break. Right. We'll be right back. Right. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is like suspenders, man. This this is happening. This is what... Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. This, this... I've never felt more whole in my whole life. I gotta be honest, this makes me wanna exercise. I wanna introduce you to Michael. Um, I think you might learn something, and this is to me very interesting. Is there a market for cross-dressers? Yes, there is. I have known Michael since when? Well, I was on your show in 1975. Right. Michael, uh, has made a lot of money out of having a line of lingerie for cross-dressers? Right, we have a quarter of a million customers on our mailing list. Okay, 
what do you think of Christina's design? I think uh, some of them are great for my customers, not for the regular public, but for my customers, they like it. Now, you're holding something that you said a cross-dresser would like. Oh, yes. You do market research to find out what they would wear, right? Absolutely, yeah. Tell me about this. This is an, a, a corset made especially for men to hold up their stockings, but <sighs> cross-dressers, not regular men. And um, it's made with eight garters, because they love those eight wonderful. garters. It has to have eight garters. Four, but eight is better. Not interesting. Well, the he's being honest, at least. His stuff is for cross-dressers, so is hers, but she's we trying to play it off like regular men. Too, and they are a different... Uh, How do the customers in England differ? Um, th th well, we have... Uh, I don't want to say with the House of Lords or anything, but we do have those kind of customers. And they are very, very secretive, and they're in the closet. And we have telephone lines. You know, we have 900 lines Are here, you a cross-dresser? No. I'm in the business. It came from a family business on Madison Avenue here for 70 years in New York. Where but there's automatically a stigma attached to you. This, this woman in the front asked me if I have a girlfriend. I've had nothing but girlfriends. Uh, That's our, not the issue. Course, Gender isn't the issue. Right. Sexuality our is not the issue. Our cross dressers, as I explained on the show, are basically heterosexual, married, they have children and that type of thing. They're very yeah, but, few gay people. Yeah, but, but they're disturbed just, people. Just like the, uh, the young lady up front here who said that she had her, she suggested to her husband that he wear it. It implies, just as cross-dressing implies, that it has something to but do with But it has nothing to do with being gay. We're going to see her husband. Throughout our show, we've been seeing some of Christina's latest fashions. Nice to see you again, Mike. Uh, modeled by the audience members. So he's an audience member. Uh, this is Gerard and Chris. Come on out. As we go to a break. Is your child having an affair and you really hate it? If so, call us and tell us your story. Yes, I have a question for Nathan. Is it something that you discuss with your other male friends or do you keep it a little secret? It, again, I don't, I don't, it's like I didn't order the things that you just saw on the stage. It's to each his own. Do I don't you, have do you only but a few. Do with your female friends? Question. This is my husband sitting here next to me. And we discussed what we would think about him wearing something like this. I think it's ridiculous. I'm femme, he's masculine. Cool. And we would like to leave it at that. And he doesn't agree with this neither. Well, it depends. She what talked for you, right? You didn't, have a, you didn't have a shot. You didn't say anything. I truly I think you if you were to wear them in a locker room, they would throw you out of there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's just between me and you. 